Hello, everyone. This is another segment of Channel 781 News. This is a city council debrief. Um, why are we doing this? We are going to aim to try and release one video a week going over what happened on the city council. And that is because there is so little media in Waltham. I think that residents of Waltham want more information about what's going on in the city. And I found that during all of my travels in Waltham and this year, I would like to focus more on that. And so here we are, um, and I'm joined by a few of uh, my friends and advocates. I'm gonna go around quickly and introduce them. Uh, we have James, I actually don't know how to pronounce your last name, James. We've been friends for a long time. Um, so you can do that uh, yourself. But James is a local uh, DSA organizer and avid city council watcher as well. Thank you for the introduction. And it's uh, James Krakellis or James Krakelli, if it works. Krakellis. Okay, interesting. I literally I don't think I've ever heard that. We've been friends for a long time. Okay. Uh, then we also have Josh Kastorf as well. Um, Josh is, he worked on my campaign uh, with me, which was a great to have his support. Um, also an avid city council watcher. And I appreciate his perspective. And he is going to be working on this with me uh, for hopefully ever. Um, so, Josh? Hi, Chris. Thanks a lot for including me in this. <laughs> Thank I you. Look forward to it. Perfect. And we also have a special guest, Christine Mackin, um, who is a freshly retired uh, city councilor and uh, friend of Grouches of Waltham. And uh, she's going to be talking a lot about uh, president and vice president um, later in this talk. Hi, everybody. Thanks for inviting me to join you tonight. Perfect. Okay, introductions done. Okay, so what are we doing today? We're gonna to talk about uh, just a couple of quick observations or just quick things that we learned from the city council. Um, then we're gonna delve into uh, president, vice president discussion uh, with some input from Christine and then talk a little bit about committees um, and the establishment of a brand new committee. Um, but first city council meeting of the year, um, I, it was also one of the shortest I've ever seen in my entire life. It was like 23 minutes or something. This is the first thing Kathleen McGrennan says as president. Good evening. The Waltham City Council will meet, excuse me, in the council chamber at City Hall. Tonight is January 10th, 2022. And the time is 7.30. And it goes on for like a minute, but what I thought was super interesting about that was that she's so nervous. I mean, Kathleen has, you know, been on the council forever, but this is the only time that she's been president. Um, and so definitely I'm sure she's not used to being out of her element. And that is what I believe just makes her a little nervous. So every time anyone talks at the podium, the camera is on Sean Durkee and Kathy Ann Harris. And it's like, you know, good screen time is screen time, but like you always have to be present. Uh, I always have to be conscious of like what your face looks like. Always have to be conscious of like what you're wearing. You have to be conscious about like, you know, your body language. And so people just don't really like those seats. But I think this might be the first time both people on both sides chose to keep those terrible seats. And so, I don't know, I think it's very interesting. I mean, I could guess that Kathy Ann Harris is, um, you know, I've been saying for more than a year that I think she's gonna run for mayor. She doesn't think so. I would be very surprised if she didn't do it. Sean though, I have no idea why Sean chose that seat. He might like it, I could not guess. So Good for those who don't know, uh, Councillor McMenamin is now the president of the council. She was previously the vice president and that was voted at the inauguration event. I believe. And what we just learned last night is that Councillor uh, McLaughlin is the vice president. So what are your thoughts on that? So the city council president is the person who runs the meetings, um, which means they're responsible for enforcing the rules and sometimes for explaining the rules to new people. They are tasked with maintaining decorum in the chamber, which means if there are hecklers, they can tell the hecklers to shut up or I've never seen this happen, but I think they do have the authority to have somebody escorted out if they're being too disruptive. The council president is also meant to keep both um, presenters 
for special permits or things like that on track and other city councilors on track in those discussions. Um, she's also going to be responsible for assigning tasks to committees. Um, there are a number of things that are defined very clearly on which items go to which committees, but some of the boundaries between other committees are a little bit fuzzier. Things that go to finance versus long-term debt can be a bit of a judgment call sometimes. So she's going to be responsible for assigning tasks to committees as well as running the meetings. What about the vice president? So the vice president presides over the committee of the whole meetings. Um, the council meets in full council every other Monday. And then on alternate Mondays, we have our committee meetings. And um, during the committee of the whole, which is a committee consisting of 15 counselors that is separate from the full council meeting, um, the vice president will preside over that meeting. So it's a, a sharing of the load across that two week rotation. So uh, based on your experience with Councilor McManaman as vice president, what do you think it means for the council that she's the president now? That's a good question. Um, and I was honestly a lot more interested yesterday in how it was gonna shake out with her assignments of the committees. And I hadn't really been thinking forward throughout the rest of the year, how she's going to run the meeting as the council president. The committee of the whole is a little bit less formal than the meetings of the full council. So, her experience running those committee of the whole meetings should translate pretty easily into running the full council meetings, but it does mean that she's going to have more opportunity to interact with presenters and um, sort of shape the way discussions come in on special permits. That's something that could become really interesting if she is stricter or less strict about time limits and debate and discussion and what materials are appropriate for discussion during those special permits. Um, anticipate that things getting sent to committee is going to be pretty consistent with other meetings. Um, in the committee of the whole, Councillor McMiniman does have a tendency to speak extemporaneously. Uh, we call it from the chair. Um, and Councillor Brasco did not do a lot of that as council president. Um, typically, council president is meant to be a little bit more restrained in their comments. I'm interested to see if that's something that she's going to adapt to in this new role or if her force of personality is going to take over and we'll see similar behavior to what she's exhibited in, in previous years. Was vice president a surprise to you? If you'd asked me that a month ago, I would have said yes. Um, because honestly, Councillor McMiniman and Councillor Darcy have always been thick as thieves. And I always expected that when she stepped up to president, she would try to pull him up behind her and make him the vice president but it became clear a few weeks ago that there was some political jockeying going on behind the scenes that I am no longer privy to. Um, but from hints being dropped from people, I know it, it was pretty clear that that was not what was going to happen. And then as Chris said, sort of the two obvious counselors coming up behind that were Councillor Harris and Councillor McLaughlin. And I say those are kind of the two obvious choices because they both have experience on the rules and ordinances committee um, which is one of the more powerful committees. And they both have experience as committee chairs. Harris previously ran the Economic and Community Development Committee, I believe. McLaughlin obviously has been chair of rules and ordinances. So they both have, basically are in the line of promotion to get escalated up to council vice president. Um, so they were kind of the top two contenders. And then given that, um, some of the speeches that were made during the last couple of weeks of council of my term and then during the inauguration event, it, it sort of became a little more clear that McLaughlin was gonna wind up being the president. So I was or the vice president. So I wasn't totally shocked by that. Um, for reference, John McLaughlin um, seconded the nomination for Kathleen, um, which like happens but it's just like kind of weird and there's usually some ulterior motive for doing that because you don't need to have a second mm -hmm. um and then look at look what happened um and yeah i actually ran into george uh yesterday before the meeting started and i told him i was like george i think in a world without politics you would clearly be the vp but i don't think that's going to happen do you think that's going to happen and he looked at me he's like 
I don't think so. <laughs> and yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I said, I said that John was the less political, but it's not the least political. The least political would have been George because as, as Christine said, and that some people don't know this is that George and Kathleen are actually good friends. Um, I, uh, I used to work at the local 99 and my, my introduction to Waltham politics was I used to serve uh, George and Kathleen um, and Stephen Rourke actually used to join them all the time. Uh, every single Monday, they would come in after uh, city council and debrief uh, there. And so uh, I got to know them um, before anything even happened before I even realized who they were. Um, and then we became, and then I became very consistent and they did tip well. Uh, FYI, <laughs> fun fact. So when you um, say when you say that one choice would have been more political than the other, do you mean political in terms of people like right versus left, or political? And what do you mean? Why is one more political? Um, I just mean like political jockeying. It's just you know, I don't not really left versus right. Um, but again, it all goes back to who's going to be mayor in three years or two years when we start uh, talking about this. Um, and and so I don't I don't want to play too many cards on the table. Chris is saying this all goes back to who's going to be mayor in in th two three years. But I also wonder with McLaughlin stepping up, he's been heavily involved in the Democratic Party in the state of Massachusetts for years and years, and he works in one of the sheriff's offices. I do not remember which county it is, but if we're speculating about the mayoral election. Um, one name that's obviously going to come up is Tom Stanley, which could leave a vacant seat in the House of Representatives as well. So I wonder who's got their eyes on which seats in the coming years here. You are blowing my mind if you're insinuating that John McLaughlin is going to try for a state reposition. Um, maybe I'm just going to start a rumor here tonight. Uh, I don't Seriously, have I don't. I've never thought this. I've feeling. never heard of someone saying that. That's wild. What else can you tell us about McLaughlin, both Chris and Christine? Because I haven't got much impression of what he's about just from the meetings I've watched, but I didn't know that he was that involved in the Democratic Party, actually. So that's interesting. What else do you know about him? Do you want to talk about this, Christine? Sure. He's a really hard worker. That's something that always impressed me about him. I sat next to John McLaughlin. Yeah, I was going to say that. Four yeah. years on Point, Conflict of interest. <laughs> it is a conflict of interest. He would share his candy with me, which was really kind and decent. It was Joseph Lacava and I on either side of Councillor McLaughlin, and he really took both of us kind of under his wing as new councillors um, to try to help us out with the rules and point us in the right direction when confusing things were going on. Um, but the thing that has always impressed me is how hard he works. Um, he got a lot of visibility when the train horns were aggravating everybody last year. Um, he, because of his involvement in party politics and his work at the sheriff's office, he had a lot of connections and he really leveraged those to get the um, quiet zone restored from Waltham. But it was also like him on the phone, having meetings, just like working his butt off um, for his constituents. And as the chair of rules and ordinances as well, he has a lot of work on his plate all of the time. So that I think is the standout takeaway that I would say about Councillor McLaughlin. Um, my opinion about John is as a, uh, city councilor, um, Josh, you don't really, you, you more than the average person follow wealth and politics and you, you're saying like, oh, you don't know anything about John Wolf. So that's because John is one of the city councilors that does not introduce a lot to the city council. He's not person that puts in ordinance and rules and resolutions and he also doesn't he's not he's not uh, one of the councillors that banters back and forth a lot um, there are many different strengths and weaknesses to city councillors and something that John McLaughlin is strong in is constituent feedback like we as uh, watchers of city council we don't really see the behind the scenes like what's going on in the ward do are they good at emailing back people do they have a newsletter and all these things and john is part of the camp that uh also like karen dunn is a, is part of that camp as well and i'm sure there's others that i could think of if i had more than one second but um but people that don't necessarily are like policy walks they're not necessarily policy walks but they but one of their strengths is getting back to people and john is one of those people so one unanswered question i would say at this point um I know we're going to talk about committees a little bit coming up, but um, 
the city council has had a Fernald use committee or maybe a Fernald reuse committee, depending on who you ask, that's been ongoing for years. It's not contained in the council rule, so it's sort of at the discretion of the council president to constitute that committee every year. And notably, Councilor McMiniman didn't say anything about it yesterday. Um, so we don't know if it's going to exist, and if so, who's going to be on it. But um, Councilor Darcy was on that committee for years and years and was actually removed from it last year. Uh, and I would expect to see him get put back on it. Um, and then previously, Councillor McLaughlin has been on that committee and has been very influential. But I wonder if him being pulled up to vice president would take him off of that committee. Um, and I say all this, I'm interested in the Fernald committee because it's a huge piece of property and it, how the city chooses to go forward with that or if we continue twiddling our thumbs indefinitely is enormously consequential for the neighborhoods nearby and for all of Waltham. So I'm really interested to see if that committee comes back, who's going to be on it and what if, what, if anything comes out of that committee in terms of work product this year. Um, I have several thoughts. Uh, first, it, I don't know if you remember, but last year when Paul snubbed George, he didn't do it the first week, um, just like Kathleen just did. Um, he uh, he waited, uh, like I think it was more than a week. Uh, I think he until he wanted that group to meet, then he like just resurrected the group and it became a thing again. Um, so Kathleen, no, nah, it's not totally strange that she didn't uh, do that. That committee is, if you've never seen it because it's never actually recorded, that is one of the most interesting and most contentious uh, committees. And I really wish they would uh, record them all so you can watch them. Um, but Tom Stanley yeah. and George fighting over the Fernald uh, is very interesting. And you're right that it's going to, it might become a more contentious issue because both new city councilors, Colleen and Paul, both talked about it at length um, during the campaign, uh, what we should do with that property. So I foresee okay. it becoming more of a thing. Chris, George Darcy had submitted a bunch of resolutions, including really? um, uh, specific to the Fernald, including having a museum there and including having housing there. Was it because of those resolutions that he was saying, was, was Brasco against those ideas or was it something else? Uh, Christine, do you want to talk about this gossip or do you want me to do it? So you don't oh boy, this is finish? like the deep lore of the Waltham pol political scene. Um, I, I think it's, it it's the police station, the police station and the city yard. And I think that's a more complicated topic than we have time to get into. To give a little bit more background on the Fernald issue, there was a meeting about a month ago uh, where the recreation department presented to the public a plan for recreational updates to the Fernald and uh, was not prepared to talk about the history of it or the possibility of housing or any of the other things, just about the, and it did not go well. A lot of people there were, were there to talk about um, preserve, uh, respecting the history of the site and all different other uses. And people had very specific ideas. People wanted to help out, um, but it was a very weird meeting because it was technically only to talk about landscaping and nobody was ready to talk about landscaping. So I would love to see, I know Paul Tates was at that meeting, Colleen uh, was at that meeting, and I hope that they do end up on that committee because I think they both sort of were on the right side of it. If Paul Cates gets on that committee, and I never did, I'm going to be very pleased for him as a constituent, but very flabbergasted that finally a Ward 7 counselor is on it. And I specifically asked for it more than once. Oh, you did? Yeah. Interesting. This is this is a good segue into uh, pretty oh, much our last yeah, uh, topic, which is like committees. City Council President uh, assigns committees. Uh, Kathleen uh, revealed hers um, yesterday. I script quickly scribbled down um, some notes, and we're going to get into more nitty gritty over what's interesting about Kathleen's choices here next week because it'll be an actual uh, committee day and we can talk about what this is. Um, so the only two things I wanna do right now is I wanna guess in real time who the chairs are gonna be and I want to talk about this unveiling of a brand new master plan committee. I'm just gonna put chair Chris, um, long-term debt, 
tough. Uh, George, George Darcy. Well, I have to guess first, and you have to say if I'm wrong. I was going to guess George, but now it looks like I'm doing that because of you. Uh, who was it before? Oh, yeah, it was George. It was George. Yeah. Never mind. Uh, uh, does Kathy Ann Harris keep the economic community development uh, chair? Um, yes. Long-term debt, we'd all keeps it. Veteran services, Sean Durkee being the only veteran, will be that. And uh, this master plan committee, uh, Kathleen actually made chair because it's not an actual committee that they have to vote on together. Um, I guess for those that don't know, each committee votes, the committee members vote for a chair, but the master plan committee, along with a couple of ad hoc committees, the president chooses the chair and she already let us know that Randy LeBlanc is going to be chair. Planning has always been something in Waltham that every two years gets talked about during an election season that Waltham does not plan enough. There's not a dedicated city planner. There's a planning department, but the gossip about that is that it's a glorified grant writing committee and they're very good at that, but, but, the, but there's not one person in Waltham that's paid a salary to envision where the city is headed, uh, like some cities do. And some cities, uh, and some people would say that, you know, it's good that we don't have a city planner because the city planner of some cities is awful. You know, they disagree with them and they have a lot of power. Um, but uh, a lot of people in Waltham wish we had a city planner. A lot of people in Waltham wish there was a more transparent vision for what we're doing in Waltham for a lot of things. And so I think it's interesting that now there is a uh, master plan committee. I forget what the actual word is that she used uh, for the committee. I don't know if you guys remember. She said something about the, the specific goal was to reconcile two different master plans that had already been made. Do you know anything about that? Uh, what she said is that there are two existing master plans, one of which was voted on in a non-binding fashion by a previous city council, which predates my tenure on the council because I don't remember voting for it. And um, that there was a master plan submitted by the mayor at some point. I think it would probably be interesting. I'm sorry, my cat is getting in a fight with my other cat. Um, <laughs> I, I think it would be interesting to go look up those two master plans and try to figure out where they both came from and what the timestamp is on them. That said, the mayor did say, or I'm sorry, Councillor McMiniman did say that the work of the committee is going to be to solicit public feedback, which is gonna be a really important opportunity for people to speak up and participate in the governmental process. Um, it's to solicit public feed, feedback in order to establish a consensus master plan. I hope that something good comes of this committee. I hope that, you know, there's some binding things, but Waltham likes to do these things. We talked, we just talked about the Fernal. There is a Fernal master plan and there, it, you know, it was voted on and, you know, we have it. And, you know, we spent money as a municipality to, you know, solicit this master plan. And, you know, we've done, eh, we just, eh, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna do something else. And so, you know, we can make all these plans and we can have these ideas, but doing them is something separate. And so I hope it is not just, you know, optics. You know, uh, we can get a little bit into this next week, but I think from the committees, the biggest loser is unfortunately my friend Colleen. Um, I think she does, stands at the least influential seats here. Um, Except if the master plan committee sucks and it's a terrible committee, uh, then Paul actually becomes the biggest loser of the committee reports. Okay, so I think that is all for today. Did anyone have any observations about um, yesterday, about the new city council? Stop scrolling. Go back up. John McLaughlin is not going to be the chair of rules and ordinances. Kathy Ann Harris is going to be the chair of rules and ordinances. I bet you five dollars okay i you know i thought about it it's definitely possible and that and makes her not the chair of economic and community development i think no. that's going to go to Durkee. Mm -hmm. unless stanley wants it for some reason but i don't know why he would i find this very interesting i would think uh if it's not kathy and harris i think pause but we'll see do you think they would let him yes Okay, well, I'm glad there's some contention there. It'll give us something to look forward to talking about uh, next week. Um, okay, is there any other opinions, anything? 
um, that we that uh, any observations that we missed here. See the city council should go back to remote until this COVID spike is over. It's irresponsible of them to be meeting in person and encouraging people to come participate in government in person. Um, they're setting a terrible example for the community. And if the priority is keeping residents of Waltham safe, then the council needs to go back to remote until hospitalization rates come back down. It's an I'm, equity issue also, because it means that some people can participate and some are at much more risk if they yeah. choose to participate. So it's a, it's an accessibility issue, it's an equity issue, in addition to being a safety issue. I hope we can chat about, and talking about you know accessibility, if it was all online, we could easily talk about each committee next week because it would all be recorded. But as it stands next week, we might not have as much to talk about because we can't be all at all places all at one at all at the same time. And each committee will be unrecorded except for two of them, three of them, if you count committee of the whole. Um, and so uh, hopefully we'll have enough content to continue talking about this. And we'll see if uh, we continue having this show, which I'm very excited Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Thank you all thank for Thank you, here. everybody. No, Channel Thank 70. you, Christine, especially. Yeah, thank you, Christine, for coming. You're welcome, guys. This was fun. Okay, see you all later. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye.